It's a part of the world where man and nature have always been in close proximity. Durango, deep in the Rocky Mountains. In the summer, this place is teeming with bears. We join a team of researchers out looking for a female known simply as Bear 57. We're going to go to the den of a collared female bear and we're going to see if she had cubs this year, so we're going to track her reproduction. She's wearing a tracking collar and she's helping to answer a host of questions. Heather Johnson is the team leader. Everything's in the sled that needs to be. One of the big ones is what influence does human development have on bear populations? Most of our good bear habitat, uh, is it really infiltrated with human development? So we want to know how is that influencing our bears and how does that relate then to the numbers of bear-human conflicts that we see? The receiver picks up a signal. Bear 57 is nearby. It's an impressive location, a cliff hundreds of feet above the valley floor. She's only a foot or two in there, so she's pretty close. She's pretty sleepy. Oh, look at that. It's cubs. The den is tiny, the mother asleep. The crew digs a larger entrance. The cub is just a few weeks old, born in the depths of winter. A volunteer babysitter does her best to simulate the den's warm, comforting conditions. You're not used to a lot of sunlight or bright light right now. Just used to being really warm and just tucked in under their mama. So just trying to pretend like I'm the mama. <laughs> right behind you, Heather. Okay. Getting the cub's real mother out is a bit more of a struggle. She's been heavily sedated and weighs around 160 pounds. Heather goes to work. There are measurements to take. The tracking device needs a new battery. And what you want to know is why she and other bears like her end up in people's garbage cans. And is this to do with rising population or increasing confidence around humans? It looks right now from the preliminary data that bears make pretty complex decisions. We had a great natural food year back to back with a really hard natural food year for bears last year. And we saw the same bear do totally different things in different years. You there? Yeah. The sheer number of sightings throughout the summer months suggests the bears are thriving, despite, perhaps even because, of nearby humans. The more resources a bear obtains, the more cubs she usually has. And so if she has access to additional food, like human foods, she might have increased reproductive success. She's got nice, nice young teeth. At the same time, we know that bears around town have lower, probably, adult survival. So bear 57 is still fast asleep, which is just as well. All the measurements have been taken. It's almost time to weigh her and put her back in her den. If I lean in close, I can still, I can hear her breathing nice and steady. Still fast asleep. Oh, big yawn. The team's work is almost done. The cub reunited with its mother. They'll stay together for another year. Say goodbye. Heather's team will continue to track them, looking for what it is that's driving bears and humans together. Paul Adams, BBC News, Colorado.